Um, good afternoon. It's, it's great to be here today to announce what is a major milestone in the rebuild of Greater Christchurch. Can I just acknowledge um, Mayor Bob Parker and uh, thank you for the great work that you're doing for the people of Christchurch. It uh, never ceases to amaze me how much is happening in the city and obviously acknowledge uh, the Minister who's uh, responsible and, and doing a brilliant job for us, Jerry Brownlee. So today we're announcing that the Crown has reached an agreement with the Christchurch City Council on cost sharing arrangements for anchor projects in the Christchurch Christchurch Central Recovery Plan and the repair and replacement of the city's essential horizontal infrastructure. Much of this work has been underway for some time in anticipation of this day, but the certainty delivered by today's announcement allows both the Crown and Council to make more definitive moves in advancing the CBD's anchor projects. None of this work takes away from the many efforts underway to help those f still facing difficulties in Christchurch's suburbs. Canterbury Earthquake Recovery Minister Jerry Brownlee recently announced CERA was coordinating a multi-agency winter resilience campaign to ensure people in need are getting assistance, and we know that's already making a difference for a number of people. But today is about the cost-sharing agreement and identifying which party will be leading the development of each ANC project. Negotiations ahead of today's announcements have been undertaken by senior officials, not politicians, and they've taken a number of months. The agreement is the result of thorough negotiations between the government and the Christchurch City Council. They weren't rushed, they were done properly, and we've included as many recovery-related costs as are known. The deal is legally binding on both the Crown and the Council. The agreement therefore creates a high degree of certainty for taxpayers and ratepayers, and for property investors and developers, and of course the construction industry. Today's deal covers investments worth $4.8 billion, with $2.9 billion of it coming from the Crown, and $1.9 billion committed by the Christchurch City Council. As more below ground infrastructure has been opened up and inspected, a better knowledge of the scale and likely costs of its repair and replacement has become known. We now believe that will cost a combined 2.9 billion, with 1.8 billion being the best estimate of the Crown's likely contribution, and 1.1 billion being the Council's share. Negotiating funding agreements for the anchor projects has reflected priorities in the Council's longer-term plan and the Crown's priorities. Looking at the bottom line, that will see the Crown fund 1.1 billion of the projects in the Christchurch CBD and the Council 800 million. We are <coughs> releasing indicative costings of each project to give a sense of the scale of what is intended, but obviously there will be competitive processes on each of them. I get a strong sense of optimism in Christchurch today. I had the real ple uh, pleasure this morning of announcing the number of homes repaired and completed under EQC's managed program has now reached 40,000, which means we're on the homeward straight. It also means a huge number of Canterbury families have been able to get their lives back on track. We established the Canterbury Home Repair Program in October 2011 to coordinate the delivery of quality home repairs and support confidence in the region's longer term future. This is being achieved with Fletcher Construction, winning a public tender to manage the program. In doing so, uh, constraining cost inflation by setting a fair hourly rate for work while overseeing quality repairs. Around 1,800 full, -time, full home repairs are, are being completed each month, 60 a day, and with some 1,300 contracting firms accredited, employing around 5,000 tradespeople, uh, the program is certainly in full swing. A major risk for Christchurch, given the extent of residential damage, was the confidence in the region's housing stock would fall in the wake of the earthquakes. Instead, we've instilled confidence housing values have been maintained, and we're working hard to address land and housing supply as Christchurch's population grows. Confidence in the city is very high today, with recent immigration data showing Christchurch had a net population gain of 2,600 last month, compared with a net loss of 2,500 in May 2012. That's nearly 100 people a day. Departures from the city are lower than at any time over the last decade. 
This delivers its own set of challenges, but they're better challenges than we'd, we'd have faced if we hadn't put in place an orderly and appropriately resourced recovery. The government's program of residential land zoning has been on an unprecedented scale, and the Crown's offer to purchase the properties of those of the most damaged land have had an overwhelming su uh, success, uh, and it's been a world first. Of the 7,417 eligible properties for a Crown offer, the owners of 7,123 have already accepted and moved on to better lives and on safer ground. We've clear, we're clearing those red zone properties rapidly, with 2,359 houses already gone, and we're on target for that to hit 3,000 by the end of September. Looking around, it's obvious, uh, but building consents are up 52% compared with a year ago, and building activity is up 23% in the suburbs and on the edges of the amazing new city we're going to build under today's agreement. The Canterbury economy is now growing at 5.6% a year, and despite economic sentiment uh, being, across, uh, being strong across New Zealand, there is no part of the country where confidence in the future is greater. Turning back to the CBD, today's announcement gives both the Crown and the Council the ability to plan both the management and development of anchor projects with more certainty. New timelines and designs for projects will be announced progressively over the coming months, giving impetus to private sector developers as the public sector's vision of the CBD becomes clearer. One such catalyst will come from the government's promise to help repopulate the business community, with as many as 20 Crown agencies committed to signing up to CBD tenancies over the next 18 months, providing a base working population of some 2,000 people. This is without taking into account the hundreds of professionals who will be working at any one time in the Justice and Emergency Services Precinct, Police, Fire, Ambulance and Legal Fraternity. Already the first stage of the Avon River Precinct near the Antigua boat sheds is near complete and will be open shortly. So here in the outer suburbs, uh, Christchurch recovery is progressing well and today will help increase its pace. With that, I'd like to hand over to Christchurch's Mayor Bob Parker to say a few words and then of course, um, Jerry Browning. Thank you. Uh, well, good afternoon, uh, Prime Minister. Great to have you uh, back in the city to get, uh, again. This is uh, an extraordinarily important day for our city. Uh, it's probably the moment at which the biggest single investment, joint investment between central government and uh, local government has been invested into the revitalization, not just of a city center, but within this agreement, uh, the vital cost-sharing ratios around the horizontal infrastructure and uh, also our roading. And that is incredible, to have that sense of security going forward, knowing that those ratios are fixed, knowing that we can afford to meet these targets is absolutely crucial for our community. And I'd like to uh, acknowledge uh, some special people here today, if I could. First of all, the uh, detailed negotiating teams from both sides, uh, Warwick Isaac, from uh, the CCDU and Tony Marriott from the CCC and the staff that have worked alongside them. I want to thank uh, my earthquake buddy, uh, Minister Jerry, because um, at the end of the day, he had to take this back up to Wellington, he had to put it in front of Cabinet, and he had to fight for his city, I'm sure. And I'm sure that wasn't uh, an easy process. There's an awful lot of detail and there's an awful lot of money at stake. So. I thank uh, your Cabinet colleagues for putting the support behind our city. I want to thank the, the taxpayers around New Zealand whose contribution to this, and I acknowledge there are many taxpayers in our city, but it's absolutely immense. A and I know there are many things that your communities need as well, but getting our community back up on its feet is one of the most vital things that we can do for the economy of this country, and the PM has already touched on just how impressive the figures are here now for growth. And I also want to thank the members uh, of the elected representatives on the Christchurch City Council. I think we've just about got a full muster of our councillors here today. We started this negotiating process in essence, in essence over a year ago when we put out our annual plan and we put alongside that a number of special 
consultative uh, procedures around the major assets that we would need to rebuild. Things like the stadium, uh, things like the convention centre, a whole raft of projects. And the councillors have been very strong uh, in their support. We've stood together around the quantums that we've put forward and I'm sure that has made the negotiations on both sides much easier having uh, that clarity. But I think about uh, some of the other details of this, it's absolutely stunning. First of all, government has taken on the responsibility around the convention centre. Uh, that is a massive uh, piece of infrastructure for the city of Christchurch. I think they're incredibly bold and brave and they obviously have got some very clever ideas about how that is going to come to fruition and I congratulate them for taking that step on behalf of our city. It is a massive commitment to Christchurch. Uh, issues like the stadium, uh, again, uh, Council has been able to show quite transparently where its funding has come from, from that, and we'll be uh, sharing that project with central government, and there is some flexibility in the timeline, which I think is something that will be appreciated uh, by the citizens of this place. The government has given us the clear option to make our decision as a community around the Christchurch Town Hall. And depending on the decisions that we make around that, whether we retained all, some or none, that's a decision we've got another month or so to work on together with our community. But that also means that we are going to be taking over responsibility for the performing arts precinct. Again, I think that's a great step forward for the people of our city to have a chance to have that uh, level of creative input into what is going to be a very important part of our city. So wherever you look uh, around Christchurch, certainly in the central area, you can see the work that will come out of the work that we have done in this negotiation. It's been fairly uh, challenging at times because both parties are looking at the best interest of their respective electors and you wouldn't have it any other way. But I do have to say again, thank you uh, to central government. This is a massive investment in our city. They have stood by uh, the word that they gave us at the start, that they would stand by us and they would help us rebuild this place together. What today is about is a milestone day. We really step into our future now with some real certainty around costs, around what projects we're doing, where they will be, timelines, responsibilities, and indeed where it is that those projects will finally vest because the issue for us is always going to be what happens to the operating costs in the years ahead. And again, that has been clearly defined. The city, I think, comes out of this very, very well. That couldn't have happened if the government wasn't sensitive to the real needs in our city. One of the uh, figures that I particularly enjoy is this essentially reduces our debt profile requirements as a result of this by around about a quarter of a billion dollars. That's the kind of sustainability and knowledge that we as a community need to have around the costs that we face as together we rebuild our city. So thank you, Prime Minister. Thank you, Minister Brownlee. Thank you to Roger, Warwick, and uh, all of the team. And again, my special thanks to the councillors on the Christchurch City Council, who have, uh, despite what you might hear, come together strongly around this project, and uh, I thank them for their support. Thank you. Uh, well, thank you, uh, Prime Minister uh, Bob. Uh, I have to say, whenever you follow Bob Parker speaking, there's um, uh, I, I, I'm stum stumbling already, aren't I? But <laughs> there's often so few things left to say because he does. That's the, that's said with uh, the greatest admiration, Bob. You've, uh, I think, uh, encapsulated in your words uh, what has been a, a, an interesting and challenging project uh, for us all. Uh, really starting since January of 2012. And I do need to acknowledge uh, Tony Marriott and his team at the Council uh, for their engagement with Roger and Warwick and the team from Sarah. They really do all that behind the scenes work that brings things together. So uh, Bob and I, and the Prime Minister for that matter, can have uh, bright ideas about what we think uh, might be good and could happen anywhere. And we're supported in Wellington by uh, uh, the Department of Prime Minister and Cabinet. I acknowledge Andrew Kibblewaite, who's here today for this uh, announcement. 
Um, but in the end, you need people to sit around a table and hammer it out and thrash it round. And I think it's also interesting and probably a timely point to note that uh, I've met at numerous occasions with the councillors in private, away from any sort of official sort of uh, uh, meeting environment. And they're wonderful meetings in so much as the passion that, well, Sue's laughing, but I, was, <laughs> I found them enjoyable. Um, it possibly reflects a strange quirk in my personality, but uh, they uh, are occasions where you get a group of people, uh, 15 or so people, who are passionate about the future of the city. And so what I would like people to know is that the decisions reached today are not ill-considered, they're not poorly thought out, uh, they're not knee-jerk, and they're not just bright ideas. They are uh, commitments that are made that will be good for the city in the long run. And while we've got a, a timeline in front of us uh, that is still you know, challenging for people, I think it's important that we are able to get into a zone where we're just moving forward and doing these things and the arguments will change. We'll still have uh, disagreements over bits and pieces here and there, but at no point in the last three years has there been any serious point where there's been a divergence of, uh, or a divergence or a, or a circling away from uh, the view that we want Christchurch to be the very best city in the world, or certainly in New Zealand, to live in. So uh, I just want to thank all the parties who've come together, thank all of the councillors. It's not easy sitting there knowing that every decision you make is going to be reflected in a rates bill. Uh, our decisions are reflected in, in uh, taxes that we need to gather uh, and trying to hold together those two things, the goodwill of the public uh, and the desire to get as best facility, the best facilities we can uh, does create that challenge. So uh, congratulations to all who've been part of it. Uh, thank you, Bob, for uh, the leadership you've shown throughout this process and uh, probably not been given sufficient credit for. Uh, it's a very important point for us a launching point for what I think will be a great city in the future. Thanks.